This is Twit. So Nailed Kevin, it. you are the lead, as 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 I already said, the lead Android design engineer for Tumblr. And mm -hmm. you reached out to me a week ago, a week and a half ago, and said, Hey, you know, I'm I'm me. I do talk about this stuff. I talk about controversial Android design. And I thought to myself, mm, that sounds intriguing. Again, controversial. It's an intriguing word. Yeah. So um, why don't we just kind of start this off? What What is your talk normally about when you talk about this kind of stuff? What kind of what is what is your angle when it comes to Android design? So a lot of what, uh, oh, I like that one. Yeah, that was good. That was really good. Uh, <laughs> bravo, Brian. Bravo. <laughs> Redemption it feels good, doesn't it, Brian? Sorry, so Kevin. Go. Of, it's okay. A lot of what I try and do encourage and talk about with other developers is that Google has given us a very specific set of guidelines, these hollow guidelines. And they run a great web series called Design in Action, uh, where they go over what they think are beautiful applications, what they think uh, are bad design patterns. Um, and really, this is the only outlet that Android developers have publicly to get their designs critiqued. And a lot of what I try and I talk about and what I tell people is that Google doesn't have to be the only authority when you're designing an application. Uh, Google provides amazing framework and some great guidelines, but just because what Google, that's what Google says, that doesn't mean that's what you have to do. Um, and I like to talk about a lot of different things, sort of like the drawer and pull to refresh um, action buttons on the screen, things that, that Google never provided uh, up front, but have adapted or have adopted over the years because the community wanted them and the community built it itself. Um, so I like to talk about people and sort of help them understand that just because Google says it's a bad idea doesn't mean that it's a bad idea necessarily. Would you say that if Google says these are the things that you should do, that you should do them? Or... Like I, I mean, I, I, I understand where you're coming from. I mm -hmm. think, I think what I, what I can feel in my head is a massive amount of listeners and, and viewers of this show writing an email right now because I know that people stamp hard in the steadfast rule of Google has the guidelines. Follow, Follow the it. guidelines. Android design is unique to something like iOS. Why are why are these companies you know designing apps that that, that don't follow the hamburger and the you know, swipe left to right and all those kind of things? Like, um, when is it okay to break those rules and when is it not okay to break those rules? Would you say? It, that's always a really fine line, and I think that when you choose to break a rule or when you choose to go away from a design pattern. Mm -hmm. That you should you should talk about this with your designers, with your fellow employees, or or the people you're you're developing your application with, and you say, does it make sense? Like, is this really the best way that we can display our content, or is this the best way we can display our user experience, or even taking it a step further, which people don't like to talk about, and is this the best way we can represent our brand? Uh, we're designing applications for for us or for our companies. We're not designing applications for Google. So it's important not to put Android before your brand. Well, that, that that's really interesting. I mean, are, so you're applying a value to the brand representation through design over a UX kind of importance. There's a there's definitely a marriage that needs to happen. And so, especially as Android users, especially as power users, I've been I've been an Android developer since 2009. Like this is this is my bread and butter. So, if anybody is is a staunch uh, uh, design guidelines. Uh, person that would take it seriously, it would be me. And I think what I've learned after being at Tumblr here for, for a little over a year is that um, the applications that are doing well today, they don't, they're not always following the guidelines to a T and they're being rewarded for not following them. Uh, and they're being rewarded with more downloads, with more, with more coverage about innovative design. And they're being rewarded because their paradigms are being integrated back into the Android platform. Sure. Now you um, you included a couple of apps to kind of show off to kind of illustrate your point. Uh, very good apps here. Let's start with Pocket Cat. I can't. Oh, and by sorry. the way, I can't believe like because th th by the way, like as I'm driving up here, I'm like making a mental note. I need to bring up Pocket Cast for the very reason <laughs> Kevin meant. So I'll let him tell it. But uh -huh. like, it's eerie. The fact like today, I was like, oh, I need to talk to Jason about that. So, so <laughs> Kevin, tell us why is Pocket Cast cool? So Pocket Cast, I'll I'll pull it up on my tablet and kind of show it off. And yeah, just to kind of talk about your thoughts as far as their design and their approach. Yeah, so, so as a New Yorker, I'm listening to podcasts every single day on the subway. Um, but Pocket Test did a recent redesign of their application. And what they're doing is something that we're seeing as a design trend across the board, not so much in Android, 
but we're seeing it on the web and we're seeing it on, on iOS, and that is uh, highlighting of accent colors. And so what does a highlighting of an accent color mean? Well, that means when you click into, you click into some show, we're taking, some he's show. taking the average mm. color of that show's <laughs> banner or the dominant color, and they're Pretty applying awesome. that to the, the controls there. So you see all the buttons on the All About Android are green. If you went and actually to go play that, the, the scrubber would be green. Um, basically, it's picking those accent colors and adjusting the user interface to accommodate for that. So we hear a lot about this uh, putting content first and, uh, and putting content before the interface and before the Chrome. But I'd like to see more, and we are seeing more, of this content uh, adaptive interface, where the interface adapts for the content that you're seeing to sort of not necessarily get away from all of the Chrome, but to make the Chrome feel like it belongs to that specific content. Ah, so yeah, so you see how here I'm, I'm listening to Nerdist, unfortunately, and uh, the scrubber bar is yellow. Whereas mm -hmm. if I go to if I go to another show, like when I go to Star Wars Minute um, and stream that, it changes to yeah. it picks up okay. gray. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm I'm actually looking at this really close and realizing yeah. the play. It's hard to see, but it is it is attached. Yeah. So to here, so here, there's the on my old my yeah. old show. I fanboy. The scrubber bar is red, which yeah. is matching the red in the logo. That's cool. I like yeah. that. Now what? Now what's really fascinating about this is that this. The, he did not get this for free. He put in, a, a, he or she, I don't actually know the developer, they put in a significant amount of work to achieve this aesthetic look. And what this does is this is bringing a more unified experience, a more a content-first experience to these applications. And moving forward, I think people are going to start expecting these sort of uh, adaptive interfaces that are, are respecting the, the colors and the styles of what you're actually looking at. I, I gotta I gotta tell you, when when I realized the accent color was changing based off the cover art of the podcast, I was out running last weekend and I just no, <laughs> I noticed the play button had changed and I was like, wait a minute, that's red. And the other one was blue. And then I did it a couple of times, that blew my mind. It was and the thing was I'd been using the app for at least, you know, I don't know how many days or weeks before I noticed it because it just kind of seamlessly worked. But the moment I kind of saw through it and realized what was happening, I I, w I thought it was so cool. So uh, that yeah, that's a great little touch. That yeah, yeah. subtle, yeah. subtle, but yeah, it's a effective. subtle detail. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, w so I would worry about a red play button though, or even like a red pause button, because you know, like a red button in, in in a player is record. You know, in my brain, like I like I I worry about. Um, and, and this is this is generally what I worry about about deviating away from Google's guidelines is um, making the interface you know confusing you know or or having to tack on a little tutorial like click here swipe here in order to do this whereas if you go with the, with the guidelines the defaults which I really think and I agree with you Kevin like I think those those exist for de for developers who just want to make an app that do, does something you know that that's like instantly understandable because it looks like every other app um, you know when but when you're you know, when you're when you're building and branding, and when you're you know trying to innovate, it totally makes sense to go beyond the guidelines. But I I always wor worry about um, to being too fancy at the expense of being uh, not no longer being intuitive. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that there's definitely a trade-off, and you have to make smart, educated, um, and meaningful design decisions when you're doing things like this.